It was in 1671 that history credits Joseph Jenks Jr. as being the founder of Pawtucket. It was in 1886 that Pawtucket began operating as the incorporated city we still know today as we celebrate its 125th anniversary. Pawtucket became a city by the will of its people. In April of 1885, when the city's daily newspaper, the Pawtucket Times, made its debut, the qualified voters approved the change from a town to a mayor and city council form of government. On January 4, 1886, industrialist Frederick Clark Sales was sworn in as the new city's first mayor. If geography is fate, it was the natural power of the Blackstone River which would shape Pawtucket's future as a hub of industry and manufacturing. Pawtucket's other great resource has always been its people. The growing city became a magnet for workers attracted to its expanding businesses, better wages, and a more urban way of life. Pawtucket's rich industrial heritage is matched only by its rich ethnic and cultural heritage, as it hosted waves of immigrants from Ireland, England, and Scotland, succeeded by later waves from Canada, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Poland, Russia, and more recently from Cape Verde, Africa, and Central and South America, among others. Many new arrivals would begin by forming distinct ethnic enclaves that preserve their native cultures, faiths, and colorful customs. Over time, they form part of a still growing diversity that continues to stamp their city, even as they continue to weave its evolving fabric. In 1890, Pawtucket had grown rapidly to 28,000 residents. But with the advent of steam power, mills no longer had to be located on the river even as the growing population spurred commercial development in the downtown area. The rapid commercial growth brought with it major civic improvements. It was at the turn of the century that the Pawtucket Boys Club, the YMCA, and YWCA were all established. It was an era when things were built to last. The Sales family contributed to provide a new public library and laid the foundation for the establishment of Memorial Hospital. A water supply system that drew on reservoirs in Cumberland was set up, and many new schools were built in strong support of public education. The 1920s brought an exodus of textile operations as industry moved south. Even amidst the Great Depression, the city showed just how resilient yet forward-thinking its people could be. Colorful and controversial Mayor Thomas McCoy presided over New Deal public investments including construction of Pawtucket City Hall in 1936, a new water plant, and what are now called Shea High School and McCoy Stadium. In 1934, Narragansett Park spurred the area economy when its turnstiles opened to thousands of spectators and brought legendary horses such as Seabiscuit to Pawtucket. Following World War II, the city surged, reaching a population of 81,000 in 1950. With the introduction in the late 1950s of Interstate 95, Pawtucket in the 1960s entered into an uncertain new era of urban renewal. That experience would ultimately spawn a greater appreciation of Pawtucket's many architectural and other historic treasures. Over the succeeding decades, Pawtucket refocused its economic approach with the Apex Store downtown and the modern industries arrayed on Narragansett Park Drive. The city hosted the longest game in professional baseball history, and more recently, the signature renovations of McCoy Stadium and the city's enduring mill structures. In the last decade, the city has worked to reinvent itself as a welcoming home for artists, artisans, and the creative economy, achieving national prominence in the process. Today, new plans for downtown revival and a commuter rail stop and the rebuilding of the I-95 bridge promise to strengthen the city's historic role as a link to major commercial centers while retaining a unique sense of place all its own. Over the last 125 years, the city of Pawtucket, through good times and challenging times, has shown itself to be as durable and resourceful and as optimistic and hopeful as its people. It is that proud heritage that we all share, even as we begin to build the proud future yet to come.